the truth is out there. It is one of the world's greatest mysteries, Scotland's legendary Loch Ness Monster. So does the lake creature actually exist? Well, if you ask one man, he'll tell you it is in fact no myth. Every day it's flaunted in front of your face. Hundreds of people in the valley say they are hearing voices in their heads. You just choose to ignore it. Belief can be a powerful force. No one knows that better than the people who are sure they've seen Bigfoot. Real accounts. He says he knows who's playing mind games. Rogue government officials that are uh, sponsoring this. Um, also corrupt business officials and um, private citizens. From real people. Hundreds of people turned out tonight for the unveiling of a very controversial statue. Yeah, it really is. The Satanic Temple of Detroit revealed the one-ton bronze statue. It's time for you to take a swim. I'm just excited to see my Lord and Savior Baphomet represented in such glorious Italian stone. I do hope his eyes gaze upon me and that my allegiance is recognized. In the dark waters. The Dark Waters channel is for entertainment purposes only. Although information in these stories can be traced back to relevant and true sources, Dark Waters strongly discourages its viewers, listeners, and subscribers from visiting the site of incidents and encounters discussed or revealed on the show. In other words, we will not be held responsible if you are attacked by a dogman, molested by a Bigfoot, bitten by vampires, chased by chupacabras, abducted by aliens accosted by the men in black, investigated or arrested by the local law enforcement, CIA, FBI, NSA, EPA, BLM, or another alphabet group, whether on U.S. soil or abroad. Thank you for tuning in, and enjoy the show. When I was 24 years old, I got a job working as a bouncer at a strip club, and I would always get off work real late. And by late, I mean I found myself getting home at 4.30, 5 a.m. Now, since I live with my parents, I moved into the basement. That way I could use the basement door to get direct access to my bedroom and not wake them up every time I came home. I had gotten off work at about 4 a.m., drove home, and I remember it being quiet as I pulled up outside of the house. The only sound I could really hear was the squeaking of the front right wheel on my truck. Opened the door and got out. And as I went to close the door to the truck, I heard this guttural growling sound coming from the passenger side of my vehicle. When I looked over, I saw this 9 to 10 foot tall creature standing in a creek in front of this old oak tree. <clears throat> and I couldn't see every detail because it was dark, but what I could see was this kind of glimmering glisten of green eyes. And also I could see a silhouette. It was massive. Then this thing growled. Man, I took off running towards the basement door and jumped into it. Didn't use a key. I broke the door and the lock and everything else. Closed it behind me and moved my dresser door in front of it. The next thing I know, I hear this thing outside throwing shit. My dad's barbecue grill, chairs, the umbrella, tables. It was like this creature was having a temper tantrum. My parents came running downstairs asking me what did I do. And when my dad looked out the basement window and saw this thing, he didn't seem surprised at all. He just told us to be quiet and it'll go away. It would pace left to right, then stop. Stand there rocking and swaying back and forth, looking at the house. Next, we heard this loud yell coming from far, far away, way louder than possible for any human. And then a creature took off back into the woods. I begged my dad to call the police, but he said no. He said they would only make us seem like a bunch of fools, so we let it be. Now, my mom doesn't like being at home alone anymore, and she's begging my dad to sell the property. But dad won't. He grew up here. In 2003, I was driving along Highway 190 in Louisiana, just outside of Reeves. It was early in the morning, 6.30 a.m. The sun had just risen. You know how it is when that sun shines right in your eyes through the windshield and almost blinds you? That's how it was. And so I was letting my sun visor down. And I noticed something standing up ahead on the side of the road. It looked like a big person. And with me being partially blinded by the sun, I slowed down not wanting to hit a pedestrian. But as I passed by and got a better look at this thing, 
This was no human. Its shoulders were as wide as my driver's side door on my Honda Accord. And it was not walking away from the roadway, down into a ditch. The craziest thing was, even though it was down in the ditch, its head was still above the roof of my car. I sped off because I didn't want nothing to do with that thing. I drove on for about a mile, stopped and got out, and decided to walk down into the ditch to see exactly how deep it was. I took two and a half strides downhill to get to the bottom. Now, I didn't have a measuring tape with me or anything, but I say that this ditch was at least five to six feet below the road surface. That would have made this thing 12 to 13 feet tall. Once I realized that, I got the hell out of there. I can't tell you how many times I've warned people about going up into the hills and hollows behind my house. Where I live in North Arkansas, there are a lot of strange creatures in these woods. But about six miles at the back of my property, it's a clan of Bigfoots. Me, I've known about the woodsmen my whole life. My granddaddy used to warn us about them. Tell us stuff like if we were not careful, they were going to get us and eat us. He and I would go hunting and kill deer. He would dress the deer and leave the rest in the woods for them. You see, my granddad had a good understanding of these creatures, and he passed that down to me. It was not too long ago that one of them Bigfoot research groups came by my house asking questions. They wanted to know if they could go to the back side of the property and search for Bigfoot. Now, I tried to warn them. I told them that that clan of Bigfoot in the woods was aggressive. They ain't like outsiders in the area. That these things didn't even like me back in the woods, and I've been around them since I was a little boy. But they didn't listen. They asked for permission to park on my property and head into the woods. I figured, oh, hell, if you're going to go out into the woods, I should make some money. So I charged them $200. The following morning, they came back. A total of seven men. And it was funny. You could tell none of them really had any outdoors experience. They had on these fancy backpacks, and some of them had on shorts. They looked like a bunch of city boys taking their first trip out into the wilderness. I remember exactly what time it was. It was about 8.30 when they pulled up. As I sat on the porch watching them, I figured it wouldn't last long. Hell, most people back there don't last long. You see, it would take them about 45 minutes to walk into the first area where you could find the signs of Bigfoot. You'll see tree breaks, tree structures, all kind of crazy stuff. If that didn't scare them, when they ran into Big Daddy, he would. Big Daddy's the name I came up for the Bigfoot I saw in them woods back there. He's 11 feet tall, every bit of 800, 900 pounds. Now, Big Daddy is the alpha, and it was many times that he escorted me out of the woods, throwing tree limbs at me. Other times, he'll just show himself to me. And I can tell you, it's a frightening experience to look at an 11-foot-tall, 800-pound creature staring down at you. So those cupcakes headed into them woods didn't stand a chance. Right about 1130, I'm standing in the kitchen fixing me a sandwich when I start to hear screaming and hollering. I know it's them, but I couldn't help but laugh. I walked out of the back door, and there they were, running to their vehicles. One car drove straight past the side of my house and onto the road, damn near hitting a tree. And the other one stopped right at my back porch. This was the guy who paid me the $200. When he gets out, he don't have shoes on. And his arm, it's got a big gash in it. He's got his t-shirt wrapped around him. And he's in shock. I didn't think they were real. I didn't think them things was real, is what he said. The other two men in the car looked petrified. Damn city slickers, I couldn't help but smile. I invite the guy in the house to try and help patch him up a little bit before he can go to the hospital. That's when he tells me, about 20 to 35 minutes into the woods, him and his friends come upon this tree structure. Now these idiots decide that they're going to push it down and knock it over. And then this guy, the one who's bleeding, he decides he's going to take a piss on top of the logs. After that, they move forward into the woods about 800 feet or so. That's when they started hearing noises coming from all angles surrounding them. He said then a tree fell over right behind him, and it separated him from the rest of his friends. The other six guys got scared, started running back, leaving him behind. And as he tried to climb over this huge tree to get back towards his friends, then another tree fell almost hitting him. Finally, he thought to himself to look to see where the trees were coming from, and that's when he saw it. His description was 12 feet tall, black and muscular. He said it had hair on certain places, but sparse hair on his chest. And I knew from the minute he started, he was talking about Big Daddy. He said as he stood there in fear, 
It reached down, picked up a rock the size of his hand. He just knew it was about to throw it at his head, so he started to run. That's when he felt this painful impact on his right arm. He saw blood, and he continued to run out of there. Now I gave this guy a few gauzes and some tape, told him he needed to head up to the hospital and get that stitched up as soon as possible. Then I escorted him out of my house. These clowns had went up there and did some of the most stupid stuff I'd ever heard of. And I didn't want them in my house because I didn't want Big Daddy coming over here looking for them. I don't know, maybe people are hearing about my property on the internet, but I had about five other groups of people come out this way. Each and every one I warned about Big Daddy. Then I charged him money to park on my property. Out of the last few groups, only one is lasting the entire day back there in the woods. And when night fell, them boys came running out of there like bats out of hell. My best advice for anybody who's encountering Bigfoot or going into the area is give them the same respect that you would want to have. Attention all members of the Dark Waters family, I'm proud to announce to you guys that the Dark Waters channel t-shirts are now for sale. Many of you have asked me before, hey Dark Waters, why don't you have a Patreon account or why don't you do Super Chat? That's because I believe in earning my profits. I don't believe in taking any donations or taking any gifts. So if you really want to support me and the Dark Waters channel and the effort that I'm putting forward, the best way to do so is to buy the t-shirts and the products that will be rolling out over the next couple of months. I'm very excited about the products that are going to be hitting the market. Get your Dark Waters t-shirt today. While supplies last, it's only $25 that includes shipping and handling.